Well, hello. Welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. It is chilly out there. Temperatures are in the teens, and it's not getting much warmer than that for the last couple of weeks. The snow we got a couple weeks ago is still here today. Even the snow on my tractor is still here. It's not melting. So even though it's very cold out there, it's still pretty cold in here. And I want to talk a little bit about when I built the pole barn and people were asking me, am I going to insulate it? Am I going to heat it? And basically it was going to be no and no. But there are times when I do have projects now, especially now in the winter time, where it'd be nice to take the chill out of the air in here. And I, I'm not a hobbyist. I'm not going to be in here every weekend. Um, I just have certain projects, like when I was putting the Curtis cab on the tractor, it might have been nice to take a little bit of the chill out of the air and have it a little bit warmer in here. I want to do an oil change on something. I'm coming up on 300 hours on the tractor, so I'm going to do a complete fluid change. And if the weather is as cold as it's been, it's not going to be a lot of fun. So there are certain times where maybe I need to do a brake change on my truck or some little project that I only need it warm in here for about three, four hours, and then I'll be done for a couple weeks, and then occasionally maybe I'll need it again. So the first thing I want to look at is sealing up my door. And I went with sliding doors. If you remember when I was building the pole barn, the one reason I said I went with a sliding door is I always wanted one. Just always wanted to have a sliding door. Not sure why. I have overhead doors on my garage and sheds. I thought it'd just be cool to have a sliding door. The second reason why is the clearance. It gives you more clearance. An overhead door takes up some of the headroom and with the tractor and who knows what happens in the future. I just wanted to have as much clearance on top as possible. But with the sliding door, they probably don't seal as well as an overhead door, even though my overhead doors still have problems with mice. If you look in all the corners, you can see where they chewed through the rubber, went through the weather stripping, whether it's here, my shed, the garage, or down in Southern Ohio, they've attacked everything. So I don't know if I can make something rodent proof. I do want to make things a little bit more airtight in here though. And I thought I could start off with the door. Back in the summertime when I started building the pole barn, I started thinking about sealing up this door and I was visiting a friend who was going on that loop trip, that long boating trip, if you watch a few of my previous videos I did on that. Anyways, he had his boat and dry dock, big huge storage area, had big huge sliding doors and I was looking at their sliding doors and how they were sealed on the edges because this is up by the islands of Lake Erie. And even though it doesn't get a lot of snow there, it gets a lot of wind and it gets very cold. And I was just wondering how they kept this big area warm for people that want to work on their boats in the wintertime. And they had like a little system around all the edges of the doors that looked like big thick brooms or brushes. So I did a bunch of hunting around on the internet and uh, chit-chatting with people and pole barns and stuff like that. And I found a company called j -Core that makes these brushes for these openings where you want to seal things a little bit tighter. I also heard that it does help to be more rodent proof. I haven't heard anything to dissuade me of that, but once I have them in here, maybe I'll know a little bit better just how that goes. So first thing is to seal things up here and let me show you what I mean. All right, so I reached out to j -Core. I gave him the measurements of my door, which is 10 feet high and 12 feet wide. And they sent me this is all still packaged up. I just got this delivered to me not that long ago. So let's unpack it and see what we got. So I opted for the one and a half inch brushes. I thought that that would do okay, but you can order up to, I believe, five inches thick here for brushes. So if you have a lot of little contours, you got to fill in a lot of gaps. You can go from one and a half up to five inches. Now for the header area, this is on a 45 degree angle. So this will come down a little bit more flush to the top part of my door here. So on the sides of my door, I just want to fill in the gap. So I'm going to take a two by four, install those. So I got a little bit more of a area that I can take these brushes and then bridge that gap rather than getting a thicker brush to try, you know, and I could have done it. I probably could have got a three or four inch brush for for me, I got a lot of scrap two by fours laying around. I'm going to fill this area in and then I'll start installing the sides. I did have the choice where I could put the brushes on the outside and I felt that it'd be much better to put them on the interior in my particular instance here. Um, it might be different for you depending on your door. I have these two by fours, they're just scrap, so I thought it'd be easier just to trim it out and then it would look a little bit nicer on the inside. 
I also have to move the two locking mechanisms on the inside of the door here and just move them about a half inch towards the center. I recessed the two 2x4s by, by the locking mechanisms just a little bit just so it's easier for me to lock and unlock the door. Next, I have a 12 foot long 2x4 that I'm just going to put perpendicular to the header. I mentioned a little earlier that it is possible to put the brushes on the outside, but for my purposes, I thought it would be nicer to have it on the inside or give it a nicer look on the inside. Okay, some tools you're going to need. A tape measure and a pencil to mark your measurements. You trim your measurements if necessary. A hacksaw. Cordless drill. One eighth inch drill bit. To cut the brush material, they recommend bolt cutters. I only have the larger ones. If you have the smaller ones, that would work much, much better. If you don't have bolt cutters, you can still cut everything with the hacksaw. And then I use channel locks to crimp the ends. And one last thing is a quarter inch hex socket for your drill. Now I'm going to have two pieces here, a smaller piece and of course the larger piece. And there's two ways you could put this together. You could just butt them together like this and just screw it down and I think you're just fine. Or if you want to stagger the joint a little bit with the brush and the joint of the rail, that'll work fine too. That's going to be a little bit more thought process in your measurements. but. For me, I'm just going to butt them together. Next is to measure out and mark those pre-drilled holes that you're going to make. They would like to have them one foot on center. Of course, you'll have a hole on each end also. The kit comes with self-tapping screws and this is where your quarter inch hex socket is going to come in handy. No daylight. So I got most of my two sides up. I got to put two filler pieces on the top. But while I'm working here, I can definitely feel a nice cold draft breeze coming down from the top there from that large gap. So it'll be kind of interesting to see once I get that brush up there, how much of a difference it makes. Again, if you don't have bolt cutters, you can use the hacksaw to cut. And they want you to crimp those ends then, just so the brush material won't start falling out of the slot. And I also did a slight crimp on the rail. Looks like it's sealed up pretty well. Now if you have a smooth contour and you don't have a lot of irregularities that the brushes are handy for, they also make a seal kit with just neoprene rubber. It's probably best for me to mount the brushes for the door on the outside. I'm planning on getting concrete pour it out here and attach it to my driveway. We kind of ran short in the fall, ran out of time, just got the pole barn concreted. So I'm going to have to wait for that. Otherwise, the last set of brushes will mount down here and go nice and smooth and flush against a nice concrete drive. Um, in my particular situation, I wouldn't be able to put these on the inside. It's going to be best if I put them on the outside. Okay, just to mention a few things, J-Core is made in the United States, which is nice. 
The assembly went pretty quick. If you did not have to do prep work like I did with putting the trim around there and the boards, um, you could probably do this type of job within an hour. And if you don't have much trimming to do, even shorter than that. It went pretty smooth, just basic tools. I'm really happy when I look up there now, I don't see daylight coming in. So I also made a purchase to try to add a little bit of heat in here. So let's do a little experiment and check it out. Like I said earlier, I don't intend to be in here all the time in the winter time, but there are times when I do want to take the chill out of the air. And my solution is, and it may not be the best solution, but you can leave comments down below what you guys do in your pole barn or your garage, three car garage, four car garage, etc. But I just want something to take the chill out of the air real quick. And I ended up going with a propane heater. And there's a lot of manufacturers out here that make these propane heaters. I went with rigid because I have a lot of rigid tools, tons of rigid tools, so I got tons of rigid batteries. One of the things this will do is run out of battery. So this has an option to plug into electric. There's a place there for an outlet, or you could slide one of my rigid 18 volt batteries in there. The warranty is not lifetime like a lot of my rigid tools. They seem to be maybe Drifting away from the lifetime stuff, I, I got to pay more attention to what the current drills and power tools are doing right now. But this comes with a three-year warranty. It'll go from 30,000 to 60,000 BTUs. Is perfect for this size of pole barn. A lot of people say that they can heat up their three-car garage in about 10, 15 minutes. Now, I know this place is not insulated, and there's probably going to be issues when it comes to condensation. But even if I had this in my insulated garage and I'm bringing the temperature from 20 degrees up to 50 or 60 degrees, I'm going to get condensation on everything no matter what I do in there. Along with the heater comes the instructions. There's also a tag with the instructions fastened on there so you don't lose them. And it came with the hose hook up to propane. Okay, this is running off my 18 volt rigid battery and I have it at the medium setting right now. I'm gonna click it all the way up to high. It obviously is gonna make some noise. Probably the burner is making more noise than the actual fan is making right now. This is at full high. This would be 60,000 BTUs and I'm gonna bring it back down to medium. So this doesn't really have like a, a low, medium, high. It just has like a selector knob that starts at low and goes to high. So you can pick anything in between. Another reason I went with this is it's somewhat portable as long as you lug around a 20 pound propane tank. But if I needed it in Southern Ohio, if there was another power failure like I had in Tennessee and I had an emergency down there, this would have worked perfect in the basement for me. And having the option of using the battery or electric is great if there's no electricity. All right, I'm very pleased. Now, if I want to do a little project in here, I can take the chill out of the air. I won't have a big draft coming through the door anymore. I think what I'm going to do is I got all the oil and everything for my lawnmower, my zero turn. So once that snow melts a little bit and I can get it through the snow here, I'm going to bring it in here, do an oil change before spring comes. So I appreciate everybody watching these videos. Hope you enjoy and subscribe. Click on that little bell when you want to know when a new one is coming out. And uh, keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody.